The first official issue of the War of the Bounty Hunters comic crossover event surprised us with the return of Kira. Bounty Hunters issue 13 is the next story in the timeline, and it also ended with the return of an existing character. Granted, it's not as big of a bombshell as Kira, but I also think it's neat. The assassin Deathstick is back and ready to cause some trouble for Valance and Dengar. I'll be honest, my initial reaction to seeing the character was, I know I've seen her before, but I can't place her. So this video is just as much for me to refresh my memory moving forward as it is for anyone brand new to the character. And I am also only very vaguely aware of her story because she was in Star Wars Uprising, a mobile game I never took the time to play, and now it's unavailable. I've read a summary of the story, but today I want to just focus on Deathstick and what she might mean for the comics moving forward. Deathstick was an assassin that was active during the reign of the Empire. She was the daughter of a Night Sister named Shellish, who had escaped Dathomir before the massacre of her people during the Clone Wars. At some point during her life, Deathstick was badly wounded by the Empire, leaving her face scarred and deformed. She was the leader of a secret order of assassins called the Cahoon, named after the poisonous worms that were used in one of Padme's assassination attempts on Coruscant. In the months following the Battle of Endor, Deathstick allowed a heroic smuggler to join the Cahoon, and together they worked to fight against what was left of the Empire in the Anoet Sector, fighting against Governor Adelhard and his purge troopers. The Bounty Hunters comic is taking us farther back in her timeline to show us what she was doing before the fall of the Empire. It would appear that she's been hired by Crimson Dawn. Dengar and Valance seem unconvinced that such a large criminal syndicate could have returned so suddenly, but before they can get too much information, Deathstick lops off the head of their informant, and the upcoming issues seem to hint that they will become her next targets. I'm guessing that even though Kira has basically made Crimson Dawn's presence known again, she's trying to tangle up anyone that could mess up her plans for Han and the Huts. She knows Solo is a high-priority target, so maybe she hired Deathstick and the Cahoons to slow as many of them down as they can. Maybe. I'm just guessing. Whatever's going on, I think it's really cool to see that a character from a mobile game that hasn't even been available for nearly five years is still considered a valid part of the universe, someone worth exploring further. Even though I don't have nearly the connection to this character, it reminds me of my excitement for when Cobb Vanth made his way into live action. I just like seeing different characters jumping around through the various kinds of stories Star Wars can tell. The canon is certainly not flawless, discrepancies pop up on occasion, but this is the kind of stuff I just love to see. And I also like knowing that we're probably in for more surprises like this. Every series might have its own returning character. War of the Bounty Hunters brought back Kira. Bounty Hunters now has Deathstick. We know Dr. Aphra is bringing in Dirge. Speaking of, we don't know why Dirge is after Aphra, so maybe he has also been hired by Crimson Dawn to delay anyone coming after Han. But Darth Vader in Star Wars could have some surprise returns as well. I don't know. Anyway, that's a quick history to catch people up on Deathstick. Let me know who you hope to see pop up in future issues in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.